healing mind, body, and feelings. The Toronto Hypnotherapist. The experience that turned me into a real healer was the 12-month period that started with me having a nervous breakdown and ended when I fell into a state of severe depression. In 2001, I was living in England, where I was amicably divorced. However, within a few short months, it felt like my head had been used as a football and my heart pierced and opened to the suffering of the world. What happened was my ex-wife, who was still a friend, was suddenly offered her dream job in Toronto a few months after I had taken out a loan that was supposed to take me five years to pay off. Now before our divorce, I had been a house husband, so my kids were the center of my universe, and within an incredibly short period of time, they were taken out of my life, and I was trapped in England attempting to pay off my debt. Now one year later, a month before my 45th birthday, I finally made it back to Toronto. I naively thought that as soon as the plane touched down, I would be fine again, and instead I spiraled into a state of severe depression. When I landed, I was carrying all of my worldly belongings with me on my back. I was lucky because I was able to move into my brother's spare room. I applied for various jobs and took the first one I was offered, which was as a security guard. I intended to set myself up as a hypnotherapist again, but I knew from experience it required a lot of fortitude to be self-employed, and I was just too broken. Of course, I proceeded to spiral downwards and could have ticked off all of the boxes on a depression fact sheet. I felt so sad and despairing. I felt so hopeless. I suffered from insomnia. I was constantly exhausted. I felt like my life was filled with mistakes and bad decisions. I felt like a waste of space and the world would not miss me. I felt as if there were no reason to live, and I constantly thought of death. Of course, I would never kill myself, but I would have welcomed death as a good friend. Now depression is also often linked with self-hatred. And again, I could have checked off all of the boxes. I had a total lack of self-esteem. I was filled with feelings of worthlessness. I hated my life. I hated my own body and felt uncomfortable in my own skin. And I felt I did not deserve to be loved or have friends. Nothing I did was right and I was constantly beating myself up over my past and calling myself a loser in my mind. Now I have to admit, I had hated my body ever since I had suffered from severe acne as a teenager, and I had suffered from minor depression, or what I thought of as grumpiness, most of my life, but nothing like this. A few months later, I began to develop red itchy patches on my knuckles, chest, and scalp. My joints began to ache. Turned out, I had developed arthritis and psoriasis. And this was when everything began to change. I knew these were autoimmune diseases and caused by the body attacking itself. And this was what I had been doing to myself with my thoughts and feelings. The suffixitis, as in arthritis, denotes pain and inflammation. And I was both mentally and emotionally in pain and my thoughts and feelings were so inflamed. There was such a direct connection that a light went on inside my head. Now, I had been a student of Gurdjieffian psychology since 1981 and first started practicing hypnosis professionally in 1989. And I knew I had the inner resources, 
to either prove or disprove, at least to myself, whether or not I had caused these diseases with my thoughts and feelings. I became obsessed with George Gurdjieff's theory of impressions. He said that everything we experience, whatever we see, sense, hear, smell, or taste, leaves behind an impression. He used the metaphor of grooves scratched into a vinyl record. I came up with a metaphor of drops falling from the ceiling of a cave. One drop didn't do anything. Ten, one hundred, or one thousand didn't do anything. But with enough drops, a stalactite began to grow. This led me to the conclusion I had poisoned myself with this negative self-talk until the residue of these thoughts built up and led to my arthritis and psoriasis. Now many people have talked about the power of thoughts. The Buddha said all of our problems came from the mind. In the 19th century, Mary Eddy Baker, the founder of Christian Science, said that we heal ourselves through molding and chiseling our thoughts. In the early 20th century, author Napoleon Hill wrote his bestseller, Think and Grow Rich, extolling the power of positive thinking. In 1976, New Age teacher Louise Hay published her best-selling book, Heal Your Body, where she listed over 450 thought patterns that she claimed lay behind specific illnesses. So I began to change my thoughts by deliberately repeating affirmations over and over in my mind. And after six weeks, not much had happened. However, my father was a scientist and I was determined to experiment on myself. Then it occurred to me that George Gurdjieff said we are three-brained beings. We have a head brain, a body brain, and a feeling brain. And since I was a hypnotist and an NLP practitioner, I knew how to work with thoughts, sensations, and feelings. George Gurdjieff also wrote a single paragraph in a 1,200-page book where he said that real inner change requires the repeated and harmonious working of our head brain, body brain, and feeling brain. Now, he also said that we have two different ways of thinking, which he called mentation by thought and mentation by form, or thinking with words and thinking with our sensorial imagination. That is, thinking in images, non-linguistic sounds, smells, tastes, and sensations. Now, I just knew in my heart that the most important affirmation anyone can say is, I love myself. And this went double for someone such as myself. So I started in my head brain and said the words, I love myself. And using my sensorial imagination, I imagined I was standing in front of myself, looking into my eyes. Then I imagined reaching out and putting my hands on my shoulders, sensing my body while imagining my scent. In other words, I involved as many of my inner senses as possible. Then I used hypnosis and NLP to recall a time I actually felt comfortable in my own skin and loving towards my body. And I brought back the physical memory of these sensations and re-experienced them while repeating and directing the words, I love myself into my body. Then again, using hypnosis and NLP, I recalled a time I felt such a feeling of love for myself. And as I re-experienced this feeling, I breathed the words, I love myself, up through my solar plexus, lungs, heart, throat, jaw, mouth, face, eyes, and right into my tear ducts. I breathed up a feeling of self-love along my primary feeling circuit. Then I looped back around through the words and sensorial imagination of my head brain, the sensations of my body brain, and the feelings of my feeling brain over and over. 
I actually created a looped recording I listened to when I was on public transit. I would find a seat, close my eyes, and put myself into a light hypnotic trance and just circle around and around. Mind, body, feelings. <laughs> the results were amazing and I now love myself. It also changed my entire approach to healing because I now realize how important it is to work on all three brains when dealing with my clients. And I didn't just learn this theoretically in a classroom or from a textbook. I learned this in a way that allows me to own this understanding. I also feel blessed to have been trained as a hypnotist when I experienced all of this because hypnosis is one of the few therapies that has been scientifically proven to work in all three brains. Mentally, it has been proven to help people overcome their limiting beliefs, such as they are not good enough, or they don't deserve happiness, love, or prosperity, and that life is meant to be harsh and unforgiving. Physically, it has been proven to speed the healing of fractured bones, increase white blood cell counts, control bleeding during surgery, and do some amazing physical things, which I will talk about in later videos. And emotionally, it has been proven to help dissolve oppressive feelings such as anxiety, fear, feelings of worthlessness, despair, depression, and self-hatred. So it is a powerful tool and one of the few therapies that works in all three dimensions. And I now believe that because we are mental, physical, and emotional creatures, if we get broken in one of our brains, given enough time, this will seep into the other two. So I believe that mentally, a dark thought will eventually hurt your body and feelings. Physically, a disease or illness in your body will eventually hurt your thoughts and feelings. And emotionally, a heavy, oppressive feeling will eventually hurt your body and thoughts. It doesn't matter where the problem starts. Given time, it will spread. Of course, this means I can augment what the doctors do to the body by working on the thoughts and feelings of my clients and help them to achieve a balance. If someone comes to me suffering from an autoimmune disease, I ask them, how are they beating themselves up mentally and emotionally? If someone comes suffering from diabetes type 2, I ask them, when they lost the sweetness in life, and why are they so filled with thoughts of regret over things they should have, could have, and would have done? Now there is so much more to Gurdjieffian hypnotherapy and healing than this. And I will be exploring this in future videos. So please stay tuned. If you are watching this on YouTube and found it helpful, please click like. If you wish to be informed when new videos are uploaded, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also love comments and will reply to yours.